New updates have just become available for the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3, bringing four big new features that will make it safer and easier to maneuver your drone by being able to see in different directions than the direction you are flying, get more unique active track shots using active track 360 auto mode and be able to fly with the goggles 2 or goggles integra and the motion controller 2 and more let's take a look at the new features and how they work let's jump right in now if you're new to the channel welcome my name's matthew and i create videos helping you get the most from your drones action cameras, gimbals, and more. Everything from the best settings to get you up and running quickly, to tips and tricks to help you get more cinematic videos and better looking images with your gear. So if you would like to see more of that, then please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button down below. And when you're down there, make sure to check the notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. Now these new features are available on both the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3. So today we will be demonstrating them with the Mini 4 Pro. And to be able to use these features, you first want to make sure you have updated your aircraft firmware to the latest version. And alongside updating your drone firmware, there is also controller firmware updates for the DJI RC2 and the DJI RC N2. Remember, if you are using the DJI RC N2 controller, you will also need to update the Fly app. I will put all the latest firmware version numbers on the screen now. So just make sure your devices are updated to these versions. So let's get the drone in the air and take a look at the first new feature. And that is a feature called Vision Assist. Now this is a feature that was recently added to the Mavic 3 series drones. So it's great to see it being added to the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3. So let's take a look at what it is and an example of when you might want to use it. Now what Vision Assist basically allows you to do is see a black and white image from the obstacle avoiding sensors dotted around the drone. So you can see a black and white image facing forwards, to the left, backwards and right. And these are independent of the drone's camera view. Now to access this feature, you first want to enlarge the map on the bottom left corner of the screen by tapping on it. And then you want to swipe from right to left and this will change you into compass view. But if you swipe from right to left again, you will bring up the vision assist window. Now on this little preview, you will see four arrows dotted around it. And if you take a look at the top one, you will see it's highlighted yellow. And this is to let you know you're currently seeing out of the forward obstacle avoiding sensors. But you can change this to view out of the left obstacle avoiding sensors by tapping the left arrow. So you're now seeing out the left side of the drone. And because you are seeing out of the obstacle avoiding sensors, you have to remember that you will see the props in this view. This is not intended to capture video with, Instead, it's intended to allow you to be able to see in another direction than you are flying so that you can maneuver your drone around obstacles. Now we can also view backwards from the drone by tapping the bottom arrow and we can view to the right of the drone by tapping the right arrow. Now by default, once you start flying the drone in a certain direction, so if I start flying it to the left here, Vision Assist will change to show you a preview out of the obstacle avoiding sensors facing in the direction you are flying. So if I start flying right now, you can see it will automatically change to now start showing us to the right of the drone. And if I start flying backwards, you can see it will automatically change to start showing us a preview facing backwards from the drone. Now, if you want Vision Assist to not face in the direction you are flying, maybe you want to fly forwards, but see out the left side of the drone, you can actually do that. Now, to do that, you want to press and hold on the arrow in the direction you want Vision Assist to show you, and you will see a padlock symbol appear, and this will now lock Vision Assist facing in that direction. So if I now start flying forwards, you can see Vision Assist hasn't changed to face forwards. Instead, we're still getting that preview out the left side of the drone. Now to unlock the Vision Assist view, you simply tap on any other arrow dotted around that little preview, and this will now unlock the Vision Assist preview. Now this little preview is quite small, it's quite hard to see, but you can actually enlarge this Vision Assist preview by tapping the Enlarge button on the top right of that window. And now you can see the Vision Assist will take up the entire screen. Now to go back to camera view, you simply want to tap the camera view in the bottom left and you can see Vision Assist is now minimized to the bottom of the screen. Now as you start to fly your drone around, you will see a little yellow circle in the center of the Vision Assist preview. And from this yellow circle, you will see a line coming out in different directions. 
Now this line is showing you the pitch and tilt of the drone. So if I start to fly the drone forwards, you will see that line coming out the top of that circle. And that is showing us how much the drone is pitching forwards. And if I start to fly backwards, you will see that line coming out the bottom of the yellow circle. And that is showing us how much the drone is pitching backwards. Now, if I start to fly right, you can see that line is now coming out the right side of the circle, showing us the tilt of the drone. And if I start to fly left, that line now comes out the left side of the yellow circle, showing us by how much the drone is tilting to the left. So why might you want to use Vision Assist? Well, let's take a look at this example where I'm capturing a clip flying slowly backwards over the top of this little bridge. But because I'm flying backwards, the camera is facing forwards. So I can keep an eye on Vision Assist to make sure that the drone isn't going to collide with that little bridge. So to do this, I simply press and hold on the back facing arrow on the Vision Assist preview to lock that direction into Vision Assist. And now I can hit record and start flying backwards towards this little bridge while the camera is recording forwards. And I can keep an eye on Vision Assist to make sure that I will definitely be clearing the bridge as I start to fly over the top of it. Now the last thing to be aware of with Vision Assist is that it won't work until you take the drone off. So I currently have the drone on the ground in front of me and you can see the Vision Assist window is saying view after takeoff. So this won't become available until you take the drone off. Now, before we move on to take a look at the next new feature, I just want to say a big thanks to Epidemic Sound who helps make these videos possible. For years now, I have been using and highly recommend the massive library provided by Epidemic Sound for all my drone projects. And they have recently launched an exciting new plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro that can massively speed up your editing workflow. With this groundbreaking integration, you can now seamlessly access their full catalog of music and sound effects. You can search, preview, and add music and sound effects to your timeline all within Premiere Pro. Even more exciting is the built-in sound match tool, which when you select a selection of your timeline, uses AI technology to analyze your video and instantly recommends music that perfectly complements your visuals. So if you would like to give Epidemic Sound a try, follow the link in the description down below to get a free trial and experience firsthand how their music and sound effects can transform your drone videos and sequences into cinematic masterpieces. The next exciting new feature added to the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3 is a feature called Active Track 360 auto. Now Active Track 360 was a new feature that was introduced with the Mini 4 Pro. And what this feature allows you to do is select the direction you want the drone to face you while it's tracking you, but also select if you want to have the drone track you from a close distance or a far distance. And also on the Active Track wheel, you could select different paths for the drone to take as it was tracking you to create unique and diverse movements when capturing yourself or subjects. So firstly, Active Track 360 has now also been added to the Air 3. So if you have an Air 3, you can now use Active Track 360. But they have also added a new mode called Active Track 360 Auto to the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3. And what this does is instead of having to manually draw different paths on the Active Track 360 wheel as it's tracking you, if you select Active Track 360 Auto Mode, the system will plan the route automatically. You won't need to draw anything on that compass. So you just frame the subject you want the drone to track and the Mini 4 Pro or Air 3 will automatically plan and execute different moves as it's tracking you. And this is really useful because it means all you need to do is draw a box over your subject or yourself, start Active Track 360 Auto, hit record and start walking, hiking, jogging, cycling, or whatever it is you're doing. And the drone will capture unique and interesting drone moves for you automatically as it's tracking you. You don't need to keep stopping and draw different paths on that Active Track 360 wheel, interrupting whatever it is you're doing. You just let the drone do it for you. Now, one of the most exciting new features is the fact that you can now fly the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3 with the DJI Goggles 2 
or the goggles and the grip and the motion controller too. Now for them to recognize the Mini 4 Pro or Air 3, you will again have to update the firmware on the goggles too or goggles and the grip and the motion controller too. And again, I will put the firmware version numbers on the screen. Now, once you have all the firmware updated, you will then next need to connect the goggles, motion controller and the drone together. So let's first take a look at how you pair the goggles to your Mini 4 Pro or Air 3. So you first want to go to the status menu and then on the top right, you will see a switch button. And when you press into this, you will see all the aircraft available that you can connect to. So you want to select either the Air 3 or in this case, I'm going to select the Mini 4 Pro. And then you will want to confirm that by pressing the red switch button. Now this may take a few seconds and remember you want your drone part on as you do this. And now you will be able to see the drone's camera view in your goggles. Next, we need to pair the motion controller 2 to your drone. Now to do this, you want to press and hold the power button on the side of the motion controller until it starts beeping. And then you want to press and hold the power button on your drone, so the Mini 4 Pro or Air 3, until it starts beeping. And after a few seconds, the beeping will stop. And now the motion controller 2 is paired to your drone. Now, when you're ready to start flying, you first want to start the motors on your drone by double pressing the lock button and you'll see motors starting up here on the screen. And then if you press and hold the lock button, the drone will automatically take off. And when you would like to land the drone, you simply press and hold the lock button again, and you can see the drone will automatically start to land. Okay, so let's take a look at how you fly with the motion controller too. So to rotate the drone left, you simply want to tilt the motion controller too to the left. And to rotate the drone right, you simply want to tilt the motion controller to the right. Now to fly the drone forwards, you simply want to squeeze the trigger inwards. And the more you squeeze the trigger, the faster the drone will start to fly. And to fly backwards, you simply want to push that trigger away from you and the drone will start to fly backwards. Now to rotate the gimbal upwards, you simply tilt the controller backwards and to point the gimbal downwards, you simply tilt the controller downwards. Now to ascend the drone in the air, you simply tilt the motion controller backwards to point towards the sky and squeeze the trigger. To descend the drone, you simply tilt the motion controller down towards the ground and squeeze the trigger. And this time you can see the drone is starting to descend in the air. Now there's also a joystick on the motion controller and this can also be used to ascend or descend the drone. So if I push that joystick upwards, you can see the drone is starting to climb slowly in the air. And if I pull that joystick downwards, you can see the drone is starting to slowly descend in the air. Now this joystick can also be used to fly the drone sideways. So if I push the joystick to the left, you can see the drone is now flying sideways to the left. And if I push the joystick to the right, you can see the drone is now flying sideways to the right. So let's now go for a quick flight. So using a combination of them inputs on the motion controller, you can fly this drone around and it actually feels surprisingly similar to the DJI Avita as you fly it around with the benefit of being a lot quieter in the case of the Mini 4 Pro. It gives you this incredibly smooth FPV feeling and it's super easy to control the drone with this motion controller too. Now, if you would like to fly faster, you can change between normal and sport mode by pressing the mode button on the motion controller too. Now, when you do this, you can see we're now in sport mode and now we can fly much faster. Something to be aware of though, is that when you're flying in sport mode, obstacle avoidance is off. So if you are going to fly in sport mode, be very, very careful. Now, when you want to change back to normal mode, all you have to do is press that mode button again. And now you can see we have changed back to normal mode. Now, if when you're flying your drone in sport mode, you see an obstacle and you panic and you want it to come to a stop very quickly, you can press that lock button. And now the drone will come to a very quick stop, it will break and it will hover in place. And no matter what direction or way you move the motion controller, the drone will not move in the air. It is frozen in place. Now, when you're ready to start flying the drone again, simply press that lock button again, you will see that pause symbol disappear and now you are free to control the drone with the motion controller again. Now return to home is also available on the motion controller too. To activate it, simply press and hold on the mode button. You will hear the controller start to beep and you will see the drone enter return to home mode. Now if you wish to cancel return to home, simply press the mode button again and now you can take back control of the drone. 
Lastly, you can start or stop a video recording by pressing the record button on the side of the motion controller too. And if you press and hold on that record button, you can change between photo and video mode. So that's a quick rundown on how you fly the Mini 4 Pro or Air 3 using the motion controller 2 and the goggles. Now the next new feature that has been added to the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3 is an option that allows you to turn off the landing protection and downward vision sensors. Now this is a feature you might find useful if you want to get really low clips flying your drone super low to the ground or you might find this useful if you have ever tried getting a clip but you're flying your drone close over the top of an obstacle but as your drone gets close to it the drone actually stops because the downward sensors are detecting that obstacle underneath even though you can clearly see that the drone is clearing that obstacle. Well with this feature you can turn them downward sensors off so that you can fly over the top of that obstacle without the drone stopping you. The second reason why you might want to use this is because if you're trying to get a clip really low to the ground once you lower your drone a certain height above the ground, it won't allow you to get any lower. If I press down on the joystick, you can see the drone will not lower any further. In fact, if I hold down on that joystick too long, the drone will start to automatically land. But if I turn off the vision positioning and obstacle sensing options, now I can get the drone as low to the ground as I want and the sensors won't kick in. And this allows you to get much, much closer to the ground. But I will say, if you are going to use this option, please be very, very careful. Remember the drone is not going to break itself if it detects an obstacle underneath the drone if this option is off. Something else to be aware of when you turn off vision positioning and obstacle sensing is that not only does the aircraft change to rely on only GNSS to hover, but also omnidirectional obstacle sensing becomes unavailable. So it's not just the downward sensing you are turning off, it is all the obstacle avoiding sensors. So your drone will not break itself if it sees an obstacle in front of it, behind it or to the side of it. Now alongside them new features there are also a few new specific features which have been added to the Air 3 so I will just cover them super quick. Alongside AgivTrack 360 auto and manual mode being added to the Air 3 you can use these modes with the two different cameras so you can use it with the 24mm camera and the 70mm camera. Also, photo mode now supports digital zoom, one to three times on the 24 millimeter camera and three to nine times on the 70 millimeter camera. And lastly, the medium telecamera now supports sphere panoramas. So there you have it. That's the four big new features on the DJI Mini 4 Pro and Air 3. Now, before you go, if you liked this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones, but also action cameras, gimbals, and more, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you get better results with your camera gear. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, then I recommend you click that subscribe button down below. And when you're down there, make sure to check the notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to stick around and watch a few more videos now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.